Hi, welcome. I am Sarah D and this is... I'm Dr. D. This is Dr. D. Last week we spoke about the scientific method and the particular kind was a controlled. controlled experiment. Thank you. And this week we are still continuing on with the scientific method, but we are moving off of a controlled experiment where you control the environment as much as is humanly possible to a statistical experiment where... Yeah. 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 Where you don't have as much control as you think you do. You gather a lot of evidence and then you throw a dart. No. I... Well, some people do that. Yes. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's a method. That's a method. It may not be the best, but that is a method. And that would not be the one that we're talking oh. about. So in a Go controlled ahead. experiment, mm -hmm. we set up a high... We, we saw... We observed something. Okay, so let's go back to last week just a little bit. Okay. What we observed, or what we pretend to we pretended to observe, carbon dioxide causing uh, the atmosphere in a closed jar to heat up when an external heat was source was put on it, and the one that the jar that had the the carbon dioxide in it heated up more than the one that had just air in it without carbon dioxide. Yeah. Now, like you pointed out, that was a really old experiment. That it happened was. a long time ago. Yeah, it was in 1856. Yeah, in the 1850s, Yeah, Eunice, some physicist... Eunice Foote. Eunice. She, she had a jar and she did that. Yeah, she had two jars. And she... One was filled with carbon dioxide, one was filled with air. And she had a thermometer she, in there and put them in the sun and, and the, the one with carbon dioxide in it held more heat. Yes, right. And so that was that was a interesting thing to find out. And that's kind of what we. That's what we went over last. That's what week. we went over with the with the with the balloons and the jar. Yeah. It was essentially that. And so, it's reasonably so a reasonable person would reject that carbon dioxide does not retain heat. Right. Mm -hmm. You would reject it. Carbon dioxide not a greenhouse gas. We reject that. And so we're left with well, it might be. We reject that it is not. We reject that it is not because it retained heat. If it wouldn't have not, if it wouldn't have not have it's held on. Is it not a greenhouse gas, so it no. retains heat? It's, what am I missing? We rejected that it is not a greenhouse gas. Oh, that's right. The double negatives, so that it might be. Okay, yes, that, so, which means it might be. Right. Okay. Oh, I've got to think of it that way. Right. And so the, the coolness of those kinds of experiments, are the, those are the ones that the physical science talks about mostly, and it's because they have the ability to control the environment as much as possible. They can put right? carbon dioxide in jars. They can put, and they can screw a lid on the jar and they can say, and we can put it in front of the same sun, right? Yeah. And so we're, we're really controlling, we're, we're controlling as much as we can control, right? So they're, they're controlling as much as they can control. And so they end up with this, with this outcome. Yeah, so a statistical experiment is different. Ah, oh, yeah, statistical experiments are different because you can't control everything in a statistical experiment. So if we're going to do a statistical experiment, we can't control everything. And so the question is, you know, what can we learn from an experiment where we can't control the environment sufficiently? I would say not much. <laughs> okay, so that's... That's the guess, not that's, much. That's why I'm not a scientist. But it turns out that under certain circumstances, we can say quite a bit. Okay. We can say quite a bit. So first of all, we need to think about, so when we talked about the scientific method, we said the first thing that had to happen was you had to... Observe something. You had to see something, right? So something had to happen that brought a question in your mind. <gasps> why? Yeah, why does that happen? And then why what do you do? Happen? Then you think about it and... I say you make your best guess, but you say it's not a guess. It's not a guess. It's a reason. Because... I reason it. When I make my best guess, it's really reason. Yeah, absolutely. When somebody is... But it's not a guess. It's not a guess. It is not a guess. It's not just a random thing that you pulled out of a hat. It's not a random ball out of a jar. It's not that kind of stuff. It's reasoned out. So I reason out a mechanism by which I can make an if-then statement. Okay. So... And in the case of the gas in the jar, is if the carbon dioxide is increased in the jar, then the heat will be retained in the jar. More, yes, exactly. More than the jar that does not doesn't have, have the carbon dioxide in it. And the same heat. Right, same so, heat. so that, that's exactly what the scientific method went through and did. 
now. Okay, so that's really cool that you can take two glass jars and put them in the sun and you can make that measurement and you can say, oh look, one's better than the other. The problem is we don't have two Earths that we set right next to each other in the sun and we change the carbon dioxide level in them. They're exactly the same distance and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, right, so we, we don't have that luxury of having two Earths right next to one another and we can treat one with the carbon dioxide and not treat one and so we can't do a double blind is what you're saying well not even double blind this is just controlled but you said it was controlled oh is it, it's as controlled as we could as controlled as we could right but we'd need a second earth to do that and it'd have to be right next to the one that we have so maybe that one was only a statistical experiment no that one was controlled they had two jars the same distance from the but not two suns you didn't need two suns the same heat source. I thought you said... No, the same heat source. Okay. Exactly the same. That's how I'm controlling this. Heat source is the same. I don't have different heat sources. The only difference is the carbon dioxide. So what I'd have is I'd have two Earths. The only difference is the carbon dioxide. Oh, you're talking about the, the statistical one. Yeah. So but I can't do that. Saying, no, you can't have two Earths. You could have two jars. Okay. I, I can have two I jars, but, I, but okay. I can't have two Earths. Right. No, we can't. Okay. So now the question is, we've we've... In, in the 1850s, we decide carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. And then we have this other guy, I can't remember his name, an and engineer. Cuthbert or something. And he starts with the C. Yeah. yeah. So we have this engineer. In the 30s of 19, 1930s. In, in the 1930s, well, he, he reasons back. He goes, well, look at that carbon dioxide issue. Yeah. And he reasons back, well, we are burning coal and wood at a much higher rate than we had been before. Mm -hmm. So carbon dioxide is probably more populated in the air. There's probably more carbon dioxide in the air than there was before. So that should imply what if we're talking about a greenhouse gas? That the earth would be hotter. So the observation that I have is what? The atmosphere of the earth would be hotter. We're not talking right. about the core. Right. Right. Exactly. I like that. Yes. The atmosphere. In particular, the lower atmosphere because we don't know what's going on up there. We're not up there either. Okay. So... So I've got this, this idea that I've reasoned from the jar experiment. I've extended the jar experiment to the earth, mm -hmm. except I can't do a controlled experiment on the earth. And you also can't put a lid on the earth. Right. There's lots of things you can't do, but yeah. we don't have a controlled experiment. Clearly, we don't have a controlled experiment with the earth. Right. So what do I do? So first of all, what's the hypothesis? What's 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 the linkage that the, that the, this brilliant engineer is making? Well, he was just saying that there's likely more carbon dioxide in the air now, and so because there's likely more carbon dioxide in the air now in the atmosphere now, it will be warmer now than it was in the '56. Or it would have been if there weren't as much carbon dioxide in the air. However, you want to say that, but yes. Okay. Right, because this year, I can, what I can't say is. Last year, the sun was the same as this year. We don't think or talk the same. Sometimes yeah. you say what I'm saying, I'm going, what? Yeah, exactly what you said. Exactly okay. what you said, except that his, his statement was, the earth is warmer today than it would have been today if the carbon dioxide weren't there. Okay, is that what he was saying? That's, that was, that's kind of the hypothesis that he put forward. And now he wants to support that. Now he wants to test that hypothesis somehow, mm -hmm. right? So the question is, in a statistical experiment, I don't have, right? He can't measure the Earth today with more, atmos with more atmospheric carbon dioxide and then measure it again with less atmospheric carbon dioxide. Because today is today. Because today is today and he can't do that, right? So the controlled experiment is not available. So what is the next best thing this poor engineer it, can do. We call it statistical. He can do a statistical experiment. And so what he can do is he can look into the past. He can look into the past and he's going to say, well, 20 years ago, there was going to be less carbon dioxide. 19 years ago, there's a little bit more carbon dioxide. 18 years ago, yet more carbon dioxide. So he saw that. Well, he stated that. He, per, he perceived that. That was his that. if. That's his, right. So... So that's his if, and then what he goes and does is measure atmospheric temperature, okay? So 
it's not clear how we measured carbon dioxide. But, but it was the 1930s, so it's okay that it's not clear how he measured carbon dioxide. He may have made, you know, I don't know how he measured it. He did measure the temperature of the, the atmospheric temperature of the Earth through 200 um, atmospheric measuring statement, stations, right? So he measured the temperature in 200 different places on the Earth, and he came across, he made an average temperature for the Earth to say, this is how hot the Earth is at the, in the lower atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So that's what he did. Mm -hmm. And so he takes this, these temperature readings, and he takes carbon dioxide readings, and he notices that as the carbon dioxide grew across time... Is this the increase or the decrease? What happened? It increased, right? The temperature increased. As carbon dioxide grew across time, the temperature increased. That was when he was looking back. Yes, when he was looking back. Now, here's the deal, right? He probably wasn't measuring atmospheric carbon dioxide, he was measuring time and assumed that time was a, that every year we put more carbon dioxide in the air. So every year there was more. He may not have known the exact amount, but he knew there was more. And so that's Sometimes the- Sometimes you say that's a proxy, right? It's a proxy. He used time as a proxy. That's exactly <laughs> right. Nice he used time as the proxy. Okay. And so he, he did his study and he found that yes, the Earth had warmed up across the years that he had measured. The average temperature of the Earth tended to increase. Are you going to go forward, too? Yeah, and he published it in 1936 or 38 or 34, somewhere around there. He published it. And then the next 12 years, guess what happened? The carbon dioxide in the air he tested. He didn't test the car I'm not certain he tested carbon dioxide. He did test the temperature, though. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and the, and the, the average temperatures went down. Yeah, it got cooler in the next 12 years or so. Right. So he doesn't know why. Right. But let's just talk about his experiment because his experiment is not that next 12 years. Right? His experiment was the first, the first years. The first. Okay. okay. The first part of it was his experiment. From the 1856 to then. So let's talk about an experimental test. How do I set up an experimental test? I need a hypothesis that is what? What do I need in science? The hypothesis has to be... D disprovable? Uh, yeah, it has to be a yes-no answer. It can't be only yes or only no. It has to be yes or no, right? And so in the statistical test, you usually set up the hypothesis, and st statisticians will call it the null hypothesis. Which doesn't mean it's not a hypothesis. No, it means it's the starting hypothesis. It's like, like the zero point of a disease spread. Yeah, right. It's the first it's hypothesis. So it's null be means beginning. Beginning hypothesis. So the beginning hypothesis not is beginning usually hypothesis. in this counterintuitive form. So he assumed that carbon dioxide had no impact on global temperature. That's the assumption he made. The guy in the... the... The engineer. Okay. He assumed carbon dioxide has no impact on the global temperature. He collected his data and he ran his statistical test. Right. He took all the numbers and crunched right. them as he did with his slide rule. As he did with his slide rule. So here's the first thing we have to think about. So we've got this, we've got this statistical test. Before I move forward with anything, I have to make a decision about, because I can't know anything from statistics. I can know averages and I can know distributions, but I can't know specific outcomes. Right? So I can't know specific outcomes. You mean you can't project into the future. I can't project into the future. You can I can't know the specific outcomes. I can know the measured show. outcomes that I okay. took, right, but I can't. I can't say that I can't say tomorrow's outcome. You can't forecast from it. I can't forecast from it. No. Okay. Not accurately. So no, no, nowhere near. So I have to I have to go, well, I'm going to decide to what what do scientists do with hypotheses? They they disprove or fail to disprove. Right. If so, they fail to disprove, that means it might be true. In statistics, we're gonna say reject. Or fail to reject, because in statistics we use our cool words. Okay. Okay. So these are the these are the big big girl pants words or yeah. whatever. Yeah. We're gonna reject okay. the null hypothesis. So if I reject the null hypothesis, what am I saying? That 
you reject the null hypothesis. And, and the null hypothesis is carbon dioxide has effect. no effect. So if I reject that carbon dioxide has no effect, what am I left with? It has an effect. It has some effect, right? So that's all I know. That's all I can know. If I fail to reject the null hypothesis, what do I do? You say it might be true. It might be true that carbon dioxide has no impact on atmospheric temperature. It just doesn't seem very exact. And it says science. You know, you think science is supposed to be Well, so statistics. Exact, and statistics aren't exact. Statistics are dealing with uncontrolled events. And so that's what we're talking about. Uncontrolled events means that I'm not controlling all the aspects of it. And so now I've got to decide, how willing am I to reject my null hypothesis if the null hypothesis is actually correct? If that's the risk I have to assume. If it's if it's actually correct that... Right, so uh, at what level am I willing, how much risk am I willing to take that I reject that you're female, given that you are? Right, so think I'm on a dating app and I'm looking at pictures of people on a dating app and I'm going, is this person on a dating app a female or somebody pretending to be a female? I can't know. I can't control, so I have to decide what risk am I willing to take? What risk am I willing to take that I, I reject that you're female given that you are? I know, see, I'm really getting confused here, so you just have to talk. Okay, so don't that's talk. the level, and I set something called the confidence interval against that, right? So as a general rule, I want to give, I want to give my null hypothesis the, the the benefit of the doubt and that's just the beginning hypothesis not the one that's wrong right because null does not mean right negate. so i want i want to so i'm saying i'm saying my beginning hypothesis is carbon dioxide has no effect on af on on atmospheric temperature that's my null hypothesis and i want to give it as much chance to succeed as possible so i want my measurements of temperature and carbon dioxide, I want the, the responses from my measurements, I'm only gonna reject that if they're far, far away from saying, yes, it does. Only if they're far, far away, not close. So if they're far, far away, so if, if, um, if, so how much, Temperature increase, am I willing to say, is no temperature increase? Why would you want to? Because if I reject the null hypothesis and I gave it the best chance to succeed as possible, then the risk that rejecting it is wrong is very small. So if I reject that global warming is not related to carbon dioxide, given my experimental technique, and I gave that it's not part, it's not part of global warming, the best chance to succeed possible, and it still fails, then I'm much more certain about my alternative hypothesis, that it does have an impact. And so that's what I'm doing. That's what we're doing with this statistical experiment. And so we set up a confidence interval and we say, on average, if I made this measurement a hundred times, on average, if I made this measurement... What's the confidence interval? Did you explain that? I'm explaining it right now. Okay, good. On average, if I did this experiment a hundred times, I'm going to get different outcomes. I'll get different outcomes. I'll get outcomes from the temperature went down. I'll get outcomes to the temperature went up. I'll get outcomes to the temperature went down a whole lot. I'll get outcomes to the temperature went up a whole lot, right? It just depends upon what my sample looks like. Mm -hmm. And I'm just sampling from the real world, so I don't have the whole real world. I just have a sample. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking this sample and I'm measuring it. And sometimes my sample is going to say, it 
heat it up a lot and sometimes it's going to say mm -hmm. it cooled down a lot mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and so i'm going to say for me to reject that the that that carbon dioxide has no impact it has to be way way out in the low probability possibility if you reject that carbon dioxide has no impact you're saying it might if i reject it has no impact then i'm saying that it might and you can't say that it does you, but, well no that's the cool thing about you just can't know yeah you can't know and so there we go and so he ran this test and he ran this test and he rejected that carbon dioxide had no impact on global temperature atmospheric temperature Mm -hmm. So he thinks it might. So if it doesn't, right, if I can reject that it, it doesn't, then I'm, I'm, I, I, I am left with the premonition that maybe it might. And so then you put it back in. It's back in the box of good ideas. Put it back in that box of good ideas. Yes. Okay. But beyond that, because I've used numbers, I can also say, oh, the number that I got said the temperature of the earth is this much warmer because of the carbon dioxide. So I can impute from my statistic that provided I collected my data correctly and all this kind of stuff, I can impute from my st statistic that carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has a numerical implication on the increase of the temperature. And he made the assumption that he said that the carbon dioxide that we were emitting into the air as we were emitting it across those years increased global temperatures by five thousandths of a degree Celsius per year. And so it's not a lot, but, but but not the twelve years after that. Ah, see, right. So if he would have if he were to run the experiment for the next twelve years, it would have said, well, no. It, Carbon dioxide in the air cools the, right? Then he would have said, well, I rejected it does nothing. Carbon dioxide actually cools the air. Or it indicates it does. Well, you can't say that. You either. can't, right, right. It, there's evidence supporting that it may cool the air, right? So depending upon what you do. And so that's, that's what, that's what. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of some old commercial a long time ago where people are, feeling different parts of an elephant and they don't know what the heck they're feeling. And they're saying, oh, I think it's a rope. Oh, I think it's leather, I, whatever. And it just depends on where you look, when you look and what you see. And it's just different every, every don't you think it? Everywhere we look, we well, see something. Well, so, so like, oh. that's one thing to say. It is. <laughs> but it's not good thing to say. It is, okay, so you get, we're running into normative. No, okay, we're good. running into normative judgments because I can say whatever I want, mm -hmm. right? I can, I, can, I can make up any statement I want, but this is actually evidence-based. And so it's different. It's like if I walked into a courtroom and, you know, somebody called me to testify and I said, well, Sarah D is a murderer. Well, have you ever seen her? No. Do you know anything about her? No. But it was evidence-based that it was going up too. Yes. So, and it was evidence-based that, well, what do you think this is? Well, it's but we, can, we have to make decisions in this life. I, and we I, either make them with evidence or we make them with no evidence. No, we always make them with evidence, though. Ah, no. But it's always incomplete. We don't have to. There are lots of people that make decisions with no evidence. They jump to conclusions. That's the concept. Humans do it all the time. Okay. This evidence-based stuff... Well, it's better. It tries to, it tries to mitigate the emotional... Yes craziness that we can jump to, right? Now, critiques of this particular this particular thought process is, well, if you would have measured the next 12 years, it went down. And then the thing comes in, well, if I'm talking about de geological change, right? Changes to major systems, does a 20 or 30 year measurement mean anything? I know. Right? I know that, I know that if I was to do the measurement right here in New York State, Right, the season matters. And we right, so a year is going to give every every few months. I'm going to get a very different understanding of what New York State looks like. And when we were in high school and college, there was global cooling 
we're we're coming into an ice age. There was yes, that. there was concern about that Fear. as well. There was another Modern there was another time. downturn, or there was there was another perceived downturn. Whether there was a downturn or not, I don't know. I'm we, not. We I'm just saying. Into the, yeah, whether I'm just. There were I'm just saying that it was part of the news out there. Now the point that you have to take into consideration, though, is that once we've got this idea that carbon dioxide may impact global temperatures, then what we need to do is we need to refine the test. We're never going to be able to do a controlled experiment because we don't have a second Earth mm -hmm. at the same distance from the sun where we can change the, the carbon dioxide levels. So we can't do a controlled experiment. So we can't do the jar test. Right. But we can maybe reach further back in time. With trees. Or with all sorts of things. And get more of a geological time length. And so we can talk about that next time. What happens when we can reach further back in time? Well, by the way, we can we get better measurements now of global temperature and carbon dioxide using satellite measurements. Right. Which are not just, oh, I sampled it in 200, 200 places on the earth, right? So I get, and, and the, the testing across the last 20 or 30 years using satellite measurements also reject that carbon dioxide has no impact on global on, temperatures, on global lower atmospheric temperatures. <gasps> mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that also, but again, short periods of time, we don't know what it means in short periods of time, right? Ice ages come and not ice ages come and it happens on on 10 or 15,000 years. There would have years to be a hypothesis on that. Sequences. As to what the distance of time it would need. Right. So know, not. So, made any, but, ma meant anything to what but we were. Given doing. that we have this idea that global. That we're causing. Environment. Well, well, the global environment changes across tens of thousands of years. We might need to be able to look at tens of thousands of years of data. And the question is, where do you get tens of thousands of years of of satellite data on temperatures unless aliens have been doing it and they haven't given us the data yet then we're going to have to find a different method and now we're going to talk about moving from um the the simple um statistical experiment to running another statistical experiment and using it for forecasting in this case forecasting back through time and so that's what we're going to do next and we're going to talk about all of the problems associated with that, as well as, you know, whether, you know, what, what should we pay attention to? Yeah, what should we pay attention to? That's really what we care about, right? Yeah. Because... No, I'm not, I'm not saying that global warming is not man-made. I'm not saying that there is not more carbon dioxide. I'm not saying any of these... I'm not saying carbon dioxide is not a greenhouse gas. What I'm saying is that the statistical method tells us things, but it doesn't tell us things in an absolute sense and clearly not in the same kind of absolute sense As that a controlled experiment like the two jars right. from the from the 1860s. Thank you, Dr. D. I'm sorry I got lost. Uh, that's what I do sometimes. Okay, well, anyway, thank you for joining us. I hope you didn't get lost along with me. And uh, uh, we're going to pick this up one more time. We're Probably pick it up one, one more time. time yeah. yeah. So please, please comment your questions. Uh, I like did, that comment. Did, did you stay with us or with him? Or did some of you come along with me to the uh, deer in the headlights? Did you hear the deer? Did you see the deer in the headlights? Yeah. Yeah. Did right. you? Okay. So comments? I'm Sarah D. What yeah. else? Oh, please comment. Please subscribe. Please. Yeah, subscribes. Mm hmm Yeah. There's supposed to be a bell there, too. I don't think I've ever seen it. Thumbs up and uh, share. Yeah. And... I'm Sarah D. I'm Dr. D. Make it Namaste. a great day. Namaste.